Welcome back to another Strive to Run video. In this run, I really want to discuss some mechanics that exist in the past Monster Hunter games that I believe add more immersion into the game. Before we begin, I would like to request your help to press the subscribe button in order to help me reach my goal of 1000 subs by the end of the year. Your help will mean so much to me as it will allow me to increase the quantity and quality of the video that I bring. Thank you so much in advance and let's just get started with the video. The first system is the Elder Dragon Repel mechanics. This is one of the main reasons why Elder Dragons felt like they were on their own lead. If I remember correctly, in the past games, we have 50 minutes to deal with an Elder Dragon. But if we're not able to kill them by the end of the 20 minutes mark, they will retreat and fly away because we have dealt enough damage for them, hence we repel them from wrecking havoc in that area. But what's good about this system is that the damage that we dealt is still carry over, so it's like we're finishing a battle that we couldn't finish last time. And it feels right since other dragons are supposed to be a bunch of unique creature that can cause destruction just being existing. It doesn't seem right that we could just kill them in one quest, unless you're extremely skilled. The last rappel thing that we had was Belkana back in Iceborne that we had to fight twice, but that was more of a story reason. What do you guys think about the repel system? Personally, I really love it since it adds more weight to Elder Dragon fights instead of just like any other monsters that you want to slay to make a new equipment. And you still get the completion reward by repelling them, it's just that you don't get the carve. I understand the argument that most players just want to kill the monsters and don't want to deal with any of this repel bullcrap. But for me, I actually really love it because it adds so much immersion to the actual lore of Elder Dragon. And the second system will be flagship monsters in the lower level hunt. This system was very interesting thinking about it now. Back then, we as a new player are just gathering mushroom, killing some herbivores, and then all of a sudden there's a scary looking monster prowling about the area, and we need to find a way to finish that quest without engaging the monsters. Why I think this system is such a good system? Because at that very moment, we as a newbie know that there are many kinds of scary beasts waiting for us and they can cart us while we do our quests as we are powerless to slay them. If we are feeling reckless at that point, we're gonna get our butt kicked by that monster. Now what's good about it is that it builds this hype moment when you are actually managed to take down that monsters in the higher difficulty quest. In a sense, that monsters becomes your nemesis and a milestone that you need to reach because it keeps interfering with your lower level quests before that. The sense of achievement is very real when you slay them for the very first time. Since we remember back then, we could only run away and now we finally have taken out our nemesis. And at the same time, we actually feeling the progression that we made. Since we struggle so much against this one monster that keeps disturbing our quest, so thinking back about now, that system is actually a pretty cool thing and I'm glad that the developers put the system back in the older Monster Hunter. But now since Monster Hunter's fanbase are so much bigger and the appeal on trying to get new players, I understand why they didn't add that in the newer games like World at Rise because newer players might find that to be quite frustrating, especially those who are less skilled in action games. But now, Monster Hunter games is quite mainstream and I think it is fine to bring the system back in Monster Hunter Wilds. So what exactly do I want from the system for future Monster Hunter games? I really hope that when Monster Hunter Wilds is released, they will put some crazy ass monsters in the field. So it really tests your survival skill to the maximum, especially when you're only a scrub. Let me give you an example. Let's say our quest was only fighting Great Jagras. Let's put a Nargakuga in the area as well to disturb our hunt. Or let's say you're fighting Nargakuga. Let's put a Devil Joe in that area or Basil Juice or even an Elder Dragon to really spice up the hunt and make things a bit more chaotic. I know it seems a bit cool, but I'm the type of gamer that really loves that kind of challenge. What do you guys think about this system? Do you agree with my ideas or you have your own vision and how this kind of system should be implemented to make the game a bit more difficult and chaotic. And the third system is trading materials in Monster Hunter 4, DIY Porium. In essence, this system is just a very fun system for you to have more options on your equipment. 
Back in Monster Hunter 4, the system allows you to trade in monster materials that you have with monster materials that are not available to be hunted. So why this system is so good? It is because some of our favorite armors or weapons from the past Monster Hunter games become available through this, even though the actual monsters themselves are not in the game. Let's give an example. Let's say you're playing Monster Hunter Rise, but you really want that Raging Berkidius armor that is in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, but you can't hunt Raging Berkidius since it's not in the game. So through the Wiporium, you can just trade in some of your materials, for example, maybe lose a Nagakuga with Raging Berkidius materials to make the armor and weapons. Pretty neat, right? Also, at the same time, it feels that the universe of Monster Hunter is one and the same because we're getting some materials that are unique to other regions. Yet, we still feel connected because the trade system exists. My favorite instance of this is back in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I really love CD's armor, even though we cannot hunt him in that game because he is an underwater exclusive hunt. And I was super glad that the system allows me to craft CD's armor. Honestly, this is one system that I really wish actually introduced to World and Rise because I thought Argo C would be similar to the Wiporian. But alas, they were different. So my hope for Monster Hunter Wilds is that I doubt that we will have all of the monsters from Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise present in that game. But we just love some of their equipments. And this system will be the one that will allow us to actually get some of their equipment. Now I imagine that most of their assets for their equipments are in RE Engine. I don't think it would take that much of an effort for developers to actually implement this. Maybe except they have to rework them to suit the modern hardware visuals. Anyway, what do you guys think about this system? Personally, as I said, I really want the system to be present in Monster Hunter Wilds. Since the more options that we have for our equipment, it's always the better. And the fourth system will be the mid system. This one is not exactly a system that it is forgotten to time as the other system that I've mentioned previously because this system actually exists in Monster Hunter World but it is forgotten because nobody actually utilizes it. The main purpose of the meat was to lure monsters when they're exhausted so that they could walk into a trap and if you've modified the meat, you will inflict some status elements to the monsters as well. The main problem with this system is why bother wasting inventory space for this? Or even taking your time to set up a trap if you could just smack the monsters and put the traps directly on their feet. On paper, it is such a nice system because it does make you feel that like you're hunting a monster, not just rampaging and smacking or blasting the monsters like you are having fun, killing living creature. So this system has a lot of potential. If I were to redevelop this system to be more appealing to be used, I think it is, should be done in such a way that there's a new trap that cannot be placed anywhere like the pitfall or shock traps and make it it is placeable in a places that monster sleeps, where they eat, or places that have lots of env environmental traps. And we use a specific lure or meat that will be used to distract the monsters and make them stand exactly where the traps would be. And we're able to use those traps before we start our engagement with the monsters. So by putting more preparations, we have more advantage in our hunt. Seems fair, right? The more effort you put, the more rewarded you will be. Like maybe it dealing tons of damage, or the monster will get stunned for a very long time, or they will get with multiple status elements and blights. Seems very fun, isn't it? Because it opens more ways for us to actually engage with the game. And it will depends on your playstyle if you want to utilize this system or not. There are those who just love hitting buttons and deal damage. But there are also others who actually love with this kind of preparation. So in a sense, we cater towards both sides. I know that this will require a lot of programming into the monster behaviors and also interactions between players and the environment. But I believe as Monster Hunter series grow bigger and more advanced, this system is pretty viable and extremely valuable as more video games becomes more complex and has a high standard.
And the last one, this is not exactly a life-changing mechanics or system, but it's more like a fun thing. It is cutting smaller monsters in half. This could be done in Monster Hunter 1 and Monster Hunter Freedom, I believe. I'm not sure if it was possible to do this in Monster Hunter 2 and beyond. So essentially, this is when you're killing small mobs like the Velociprey with a very strong weapons. Essentially, showing how strong the player is at that point, to the point that they will be cleaved into two and the corpse will disappear. So why I put this system here? So the purpose is that it is more like a raising awareness that in the old Monster Hunter game, they even have this kind of crazy system. And I would like to hear the opinion of the newer Monster Hunter players regarding this system. Is it good that they remove it from the newer game? Or you think that it will be interesting to see them in the newer game? In my opinion, this is more like a funny mechanics that I don't think should be added into the modern game due to various reasons like gameplay-wise we can't carve materials from monsters or in modern times this might cause some journalists writing something negative about it and causing drama along with the animal cruelty activists that don't even play the game. But it is fascinating to know that such mechanics exist in the older Monster Hunter game. Well, that's all 5 forgotten mechanics that I believe should be brought attention to many new Monster Hunter players. So after hearing about this system and its potential, is there any of them you would like to see implemented in Monster Hunter Wilds? Let me know in the comment section. If any of the viewer is an old generation hunters, is there any other system that you think might have forgotten to time? And how do you feel about this 5 system back in the older games? Let me know about all of the good stuff in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Till the next round, stay sharp hunters.